okay so today we are going to learn about uh, uh, as i said uh, unit 5 is about national public health programs and uh, there are multiple programs which we are going to learn in under unit 5 so one is nvdcp national vector disease control program uh, second one is uh, national aids control program nacp uh, and then uh, national tuber con uh, tb control program polio elimination program and leprosy eradication program okay so under uh, nvdcp uh under this uh, nvdcp we will be learning about uh, three four diseases in particular malaria lymphatic filariasis dengue and japanese encephalitis so uh, nvdcp was actually launched in 2003 four and then uh, there had been convergence of three program malaria filaria and kalajar so and then uh, over the uh, over over years they included uh, japanese encephalitis and dengue also in this program and then uh, in 2007 chikungunya see uh, uh, nvdcp is something which is evolving over the years initially when the program started it was more of malaria then uh, off lately if you will see rapid urbanization has added and then we realized that there are multiple other diseases like japanese encephalitis and then dengue chikungunya these programs and uh, came over the period and these because uh, the carrier over there is a vector which is mostly a mosquito so these programs has been converged and for, mm -hmm. no, uh, took the shape of nbdcp what we are seeing right now so uh, there are basically six diseases broadly malaria filaria kalajar japanese encephalitis dengue uh, which is sometimes uh, known as dengue hemorrhagic fever also which is very uh, fatal and then chikungunya uh, which of these diseases are more prevalent in your areas uh recently dengue has been uh, an endemic in in manipur mm -hmm. uh malaria chikungunya is not uh, seen at the in manipur kalajar is also not seen then, kalajar, uh, kal kal kalajar is uh, very much you know uh, confined to few areas of up and bihar you cannot yeah. see and then this is uh, mostly seen in those areas where people are still living in kachcha houses means mud yeah. made houses okay japanese encephalitis there is no such report this year Okay, and uh, dengue has been a problem. Chikungunya is not a problem in Manipur at the moment. Okay, so I can see some new faces, uh, Priyadarshini and Renu. Uh, if you guys can tell me from where, which part of India you guys are? okay uh never mind uh what what uh time of year you can see uh dengue in your manipur usually from uh the month of july to november mm -hmm. this year he hasn't still been persisting in manipur even after the month of november okay. even with the season coming in it is still over there because mostly in India, uh, if you will see the areas where it is prevalent, this is mostly post rainy season, and then uh, post Diwali, uh, the 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 severity of uh, no, the number of the cases go, goes uh, through a decline, you know, trend. So, uh, uh, and is, is this seen throughout Manipur or? Uh, Especially in those areas of Manipur, which is you know uh, facing more rapid urbanization. Yes, basically in the urban areas, rapid urbanized areas. Okay, so this is one of one of one of the problem uh, which uh, is being faced in India of lately because of the rapid urbanization. So take the name of the city and the state where which has seen you know 
rapid uh, construction work migratory migration migration happening you know too much of construction happening too much of industrialization so these areas you will see uh, cases of uh, dengue which is more you know, towards the increasing trend so uh, this is uh, basically uh, uh, categorization of vector borne diseases uh, as i uh, showed in the previous slide so these are six uh, diseases and uh, government of india is having its own elimination target so malaria is caused by anopheles uh, mosquito and they are targeting to finish it by 2030 and lymphatic filariasis is called uh, caused by culex uh, mosquito uh, kala ajar is called uh, caused by sand fly dengue and chikungunya is caused by aedes mosquito whereas japanese syphilitis again is caused by culex mosquito so every uh, health program is being uh, no uh, led by uh, central government so there is a directorate of national vector borne disease control program uh, which is situated in delhi and is the technical nodal office for nvdcp and then going uh, beyond center uh, at state levels there is a state vector borne disease control component under directorate of uh, health services and each state they have their own nodal officers for that and then similarly at the district level there are uh, no uh, district malaria offices which have been established and uh, there is a chief medical officer uh, which is uh, taking care uh, of those uh, offices now certain states under nbdcp there are multiple nodal officers uh, like there is a malaria officer and there is another a vector borne officer malaria officer is very much you know uh, either mild malaria or you can say dengue is being taken care by uh, that malaria officer and rest other whether it is filaria chikungunya or kalajar is being taken care by other uh, nodal officer so when i am saying this i am specifically talking about uh, states like up and bihar so if you can talk about uh, your experiences in manipur please so do you have only one nbdcp officer at the state level Uh, yes we have the state malaria officers looking after uh, the national vector borne disease control program okay and state and districts also there is only one uh, district malaria officer right yes yes okay now this is something very interesting uh, we have converged multiple health programs uh, into a vector borne disease control program but traditionally uh these uh, nodal officers are still known as malaria officers in their respective you know, uh, offices okay so uh, at at periphery or at the field level this uh, delivery of malaria control services are being taken care by asar or the other volunteers uh, who are at the community and household level in the endemic uh, areas so what are the main activities of directorate of nvdcp so uh, when i am saying directorate this is situated in delhi centrally mm -hmm. so they are supposed to formulate policies and guidelines so whatever uh, guidelines you can uh, see coming through uh, the guidelines issued by government of india is uh, uh, being issued and uh, formulated by directorate of nvdcp so they also provide technical uh, guidelines how to go about uh, when there is a uh, okay, when there are cases of dengue chikungunya or malaria coming out in those endemic areas what has to be done uh, before the end of rainy season uh, the directorate is start, start planning with respective state governments uh, no they they start conducting mopping of uh, around uh, whether uh, the they will be sending out new uh, buses logistical planning so all these things are being uh, done 
So not only that planning and uh, logistical part, they also ensure that the programs which is being rolled out at the state level and the district level is being monitored. So uh, this year, uh, uh, central government has, uh, or the directorate of uh, NBDCP has sent their representatives to states like UP, Bihar to you know, uh, uh, look into uh, the breakdown of dengue. I assume that they might have sent a team to Manipur also. So they have formed various teams which has gone to respective states and looked into uh, the lacunas or how better they can plan for the breakdown of uh, dengue because uh, this has been of lately a regular event which two, three years. So they have uh, formed a team, a uh, task force team, which has gone into the states and looked into their planning. And they have uh, seen uh, how better they can do next year. So uh, they are also involved in coordination of activities uh, throughout the states and union territories. Collaboration with international organizations like WHO, UN. So, so whichever organization or uh, technical uh, bodies are there, like uh, there is something called Global Fund. So Global Fund is a Switzerland-based, uh, Geneva-based organization, and they uh, give international funding throughout uh, uh, different countries. So in India, they are uh, providing funding for AIDS, TB, and malaria. So malaria is one of the priority areas. So they involve those organizations in you know, uh, coming up with guideline uh, policies or to give uh, technical trainings. So uh, not only this, they also uh, form, um, uh, they also conduct research uh, throughout uh, the year uh, on these you know, uh, diseases. So NCDC is one of the organization, National, Contro uh, National Center for Disease Control. So this is uh, based in Delhi. Similarly, uh, there is National Institute of uh, Malaria Research, which you can see over there, NIMR. So they are also pioneer for uh, conducting research in malaria um, throughout uh, India. And then there is a regional a research, a regional medical research, uh, which is uh, based in Bhubaneswar. So again, they are conducting multiple uh, research throughout India. And they are also involved in coordinating control activities. Like I, I will be discussing how they can cut, uh, what are those control activities which are being, you know, done. So basically there are uh, three broad strategies uh, for NBDCP. One is disease management. Uh, another is uh, in vec uh, integrated vector management. And third one is supportive intervention. So, uh, First strategy is when there is already a epidemic breakdown, uh, the already disease patients are there. So in that case, this strategy helps them in early detection of the uh, cases and then their complete treatment, a strengthening of referral services. Suppose if a malaria case or a, a dengue case has been identified at a PHC and that cannot be are uh, treated or monitored at that PSC level, so their referral services, and then epidemic preparation, uh, preparedness, and rapid response. So there is something called uh, outbreak investigation. So uh, if there is an epidemic breakdown, so uh, there is a team, uh, rapid response team at district level, which goes and you know uh, they. Uh, they identify cases and then there is a rapid response team which uh, takes care of what, what has to be done uh, in an epidemic uh, situation. Uh, second one is integrated vector uh, management. So under that, there is something which is called entomological services. Entomological, uh, can anyone tell what is entomology? Have you guys heard about this? <laughs> I think it's a study of insects and yes. and, and mosquitoes. Uh, a study of insects. Insects. And... Insects. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, 
uh, we know that uh, NVDCP is spread through uh, vector. That vector can be an insect or uh, a mosquito. So uh, under this program, there is a provision of having you know a state entomological officer, uh, and certain some of the states they do have district entomological officers also, but. Uh, multiple states you do you will not find the state uh, district entomological officers but states like karnataka uh, kerala tamil nadu uh, they have uh, these entomological officers post a uh, field at their district level also but states like up bihar if they have uh, entomological officer at a state level that is itself is the biggest thing okay so integrated vector management uh, talks about having anti larva measures anti adult measures so like uh, i'm giving you example of anti larva measures so here uh, you talk about you know uh, having uh, you talk about uh, activities where uh, no, uh, there is a gombi feast which is uh, being given to um, uh, people to leave those uh, uh, feces uh, in the drain or in the pond or in the well where uh, which is supposed to be breeding site for those mosquito and those these fish they feed upon uh, those larvas and then anti malaria uh, anti uh, adult measures can be you know uh, uh, ensuring uh, that there is no stagnant water or leaving plastic beads in the water, which will, you know, uh, inhale all the water and will swollen up. So there will be no stagnant water around, or it can be uh, uh, indoor uh, residual uh, fogging or outdoor fogging. So these are some of the interventions. A supportive interventions can be in terms of behavioral change communication where you display posters and you know, uh, uh, like posters like you know, wearing full sleeve shirts, uh, using mosquito net in the night. You now government is also providing uh, insecticide treated bed nets, uh, which is being used and they are being uh, you know, uh, advised through IEC campaign, BCC campaign to use those. So intersectoral con convergence, uh, here, intersectoral convergence means involving, you know, municipal corporations because most of these sites are uh, urban uh, sites, and they are, uh, as I said brief, uh, previously, that because of rapid urbanization, these things are happening. So, public-private partnership, where be uh, government or uh, agencies involve private partners, like you know, uh, the builder organization, uh, builder uh, associations, or now private hospitals or NGO partners. So uh, these things are being done under supportive intervention. Um, okay, now we will be talking about malaria. So under malaria control strategies, the first and foremost is early case detection and prompt treatment. So uh, once uh, the cases are uh, with high grade fever are being identified, uh, then in that area, uh, there should be health camp organized and then uh, uh, in that site, try to you know, uh, look after each and every uh, symptomatic cases and then uh, make sure that they are lab confirmed do their you know blood tests and find out who are those malaria cases and if they are identified put them on drug regimen so chloroquinine is the main uh, anti -ma uh, malarial drug uh, which is used for uncomplicated apart from fever if you are not going to see any so there should be you know a drug distributor center uh, which has to be you know established in those areas and fever treatment depots uh, to be uh, ensured so that they can easy access anti-malarial drugs within the community and they do, don't have to go uh, far uh, areas to get those medicines. So as I said, uh, it should be done in a you know, 
health camp mode where a uh, health team should go and uh, go to that cluster where uh, the cases are coming and they should uh, start screening uh, and then based upon the identification they should start doing drug distribution over there so certain at times what is being seen that uh, there is a team which is going over there with a staff nurse doctor or a lab technician and they do basically blood examination and after blood examination they give them prescription and tell them to go to health facility and take medicine so most of the time what happens that uh, these uh, all, all people who has been identified as positive cases they don't turn up to health facility to take medicine so there is always a drop out and some of them they go to private uh, clinics so just to ensure that there should no uh, drop out uh, they should start doing drug distribution within those areas so okay and the second is a uh, vector control so with, under vector control first one is chemical control second is bacterial uh, biological control so under chemical control as i said there are in uh, there are two three things first one is indoor residual spray and this is supposed to be more effective uh, so but nowadays people are uh, very you know modern they don't want this to be done within their rooms because once uh, this is done inside the room this will uh, uh, leave uh, some sort of smell and some sort of you know uh, stains on your wall but this is very effective very effective uh, compared to outdoor fogging so uh, this is being done and then use of chemical larvicides like avate in potable water so this is again uh, uh, one of the chemical uh, larvicide which is being provided by government aerosol spray spray uh, during daytime and uh, melatonin fogging during outbreak so uh, if you will see mostly uh, they do outdoor fogging rather than you know doing irs so but uh, it is uh, a study wise it is being proved that outdoor fogging does not you know control much of the uh, malaria cases whereas indoor residual spray is very effective uh, and this should be promoted now uh, you, uh, under biological control as i said use of larva were fees like uh, in uh, ornamental tanks fountain etc use of biocides uh, this to be done uh, uh use of mosquito repellent liquid coils mat you know and then uh, in insecticide treated bed uh, bed nets also comes under this a third one is community uh, participation this should be done by sensitizing and involving the community for detection of any uh, this uh, anopheles mosquito breeding sites and their elimination and then uh, involving ngos uh, uh, in that and then collaborating with private sector uh, like uh, as i said local hospital local panchayat or builder association and the fourth one is environmental uh, management and source reduction so source reduction so the source is uh, stagnant water or filled water uh, so the focus should be towards eliminating that and if there uh, there is a uh, filled water or a stored water it should be properly covered so this is mostly for overhead tanks where you know urban areas uh, they don't have regular supply of water so uh, they get a uh, you know, scheduled uh, there is a, at a scheduled time water supply is being given so they store water in the overhead tanks and if these tanks are not covered so this will be uh, probable breeding sites for the mosquito so especially if you will see during uh, rainy season or post rainy season uh, what uh, delhi municipal corporation different municipal corporations they do they do visit house to house and then they see whether there are any portable you know breeding sites especially they give uh, tablets if you know people are using coolers and all so these are the probable uh, breeding sites so uh, fifth one is monitoring and evaluation of the program
so uh, monthly computerized uh, basically this is uh, mis where uh, you get uh, all the details of you know cases over there uh, breakdown okay probably i think uh, you can talk about this more right Kesham, if I am right, you are uh, the MIS person for your state, right? Uh, no, sir. Ibumcha was the HMIS uh, person he, for this. He's, he's not, not here. Okay. So probably he would have talked better. Anyway, um, we will see if we get that opportunity in some of the other classes. So there is a MIS uh, which is uh, which has to be shared on a daily basis with central government and the state government. So whatever cases are coming, it has to be put into the management information system. And then, as I said, that field visits are being undertaken by a state team and national team to look into the preparedness and all uh, things are which is being done. Field is, uh, visits by malaria research in uh, centers, NIMR, as I said, and other ICMR institutes. And then feedback is given to a state based on the field observations to take corrective action. So national framework, uh, this document is available in the uh, public domain. Uh, I will share it uh, in the group by today evening sometime. So government of India has prepared national uh, framework of malaria elimination. Uh, and this was for 2016 to 2013. So the vision of this uh, mm, framework is to eliminate malaria nationally and contribute to improved health quality of life and alleviation of property uh, poverty so what are the goals goals are to eliminate malaria uh, by 2030 and mala maintain malaria free status in areas where malaria transmission has been interrupted and prevent reintroduction of malaria so basically first one is to eliminate malaria and second is to ensure that those areas which are uh, malaria endemic there should not be any you know uh, uh, cases of malaria coming again and again so uh, there are classification of states and union territories based on certain uh, definitions so there is if you can see category 0 category 1 category 2 category 3 so category 0 is uh, prevention of re establishment phase so these are basically category zero are the states where there are zero indigenous cases of malaria. So category zero is those states or those areas where there are no cases of malaria. Category one, which is in elimination phase. So state and union territories, uh, including their districts reporting an API of less than one cases per thousand population at risk. So this is category one. Category two is, uh, what is API? It's In called annual, annual parasite index. Yes, very good. So this is API. I, wa I was expecting someone should ask because uh, there there might be people who are not in the government system and they don't know that. So what what uh, if you can help me in defining API? Uh, I think it's the new cases uh, from malaria uh, in a year per thousand individuals, something like that. I. I... Okay. The <laughs> so basically, basically, API refers to high and moderate malaria transmission risk areas. Okay, so if, if this is something again which you go and then we'll see. Let me see if I am having API something over there. Give give me a minute. I'm stopping share and, and let me check out my slide deck.
So you guys can see what is API. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay. So uh, I will add this slide in that. So total number of positive slides for a parasite in a year multiplied by 1000 by total population. So these are category uh, 0 to 3. Uh, so this will help you in better understanding of that uh, API. Okay. So uh, this is classification of states and union territories based upon you know category 0, 1, 2, 3. So uh, this is category 0 is almost like there is no uh, cases over there. Category 1 is elimination phase. Category 2 is pre-elimination phase. And category three is intensified control phase. So these are those endemic areas where you can see every year, you know, uh, cases of malaria coming throughout. So second one is uh, lymphatic phalaresis. So basically you are supposed to know in detail about, you know, malaria and NVDCP, but uh, I will uh, broadly talk about uh, lymphatic phalaresis and certain diseases also I will cover uh, and we'll see whatever is being covered in this class. Otherwise, I will share the notes. You can go through that because uh, your syllabus talks more about uh, uh, filaria and broadly about uh, vector borne disease control program. So you should know what are those uh, diseases under NVDCP. And then API is one of the um, most frequently uh, asked questions among various universities. I'm not very much particular about your university, but you should be aware about what is API. So, filaria is also a major public health problem in India next to malaria under vector disease control program. So, discovery of micro filaria uh, in the peripheral blood was first done in uh, 1872 in Kolkata by Lewis. So, uh, basically there are 250 districts uh, in 20 states in India, which are reporting, you know, filaria um, cases. So, northwestern states uh, are known to be free from indigenous. Manipur is still you are getting filaria cases. I don't think we have any filaria cases at the moment. Okay, so in India, I, I, if I correctly remember, Karnataka, they do have filaria cases. Goa, they do have filaria cases. UP, Bihar, definitely, you know, Odisha, in these cases you will get. Uh, okay, so I am. I have got a list of uh, states also. So Andhra Pradesh, Assam. So in northeast, Assam is there. Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Goa, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Gujarat, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Pondicherry, Andaman, Nicobar, Daman, Diu. Uh, and Lakshdeep. So these are the places where uh, still uh, filaria cases are being recorded. Sir, the slide seems to be stuck. <clears throat> Can you please check? You cannot see the... Yeah, we're cannot... stuck in API. Okay, wait, let me do one thing. Now you can see. Now you can see? Uh, yes, we can see it now. Okay. So uh, the fourth pointer, uh, cases of filaria. Uh, you will see the states which where you can see you know, cases of filaria in India. So in 1978, mm, this uh, Filaria was merged with urban malaria scheme and 2003-2004 it was merged with. So initially filaria was merged with urban malaria program and then 2003-2004 it was merged with uh, NVDCP. So what are the signs and symptoms of filariasis? Recurrent fever, intermittent or uh, remittent mm, with often double rise. So here also you will see you know, high grade fever, loss of appetite, pallor, weight loss with progressive emaciation, weakness, splenomegaly, 
and then uh, enlargement of liver uh, also you can see in this mm. what is emaciation Can anyone tell what is emaciation? It's uh, uh, getting uh, the state of like being weak and yes. then so, thin. Yes, uh, so it will keep on losing weight and then progressively you will become thin to thinner day by day. Okay. Uh, ideally, this question has to be asked by others. I don't know whether they are listening or not. So I can see only one person responding all the time. So this is why I had been asking questions to, to make it you know two ways rather than me speaking all the time. So uh, there was a revised filaria control program. So this was uh, under uh, national health policy 2002, uh, which was talking about elimination of filaria by 2015, which never happened. So the revised strategy uh, is uh, you know, having MDA, so, Government of India uh, conducts uh, mass drug administration every year in the endemic areas where they are given single dose of DEC, diethyl carbazamine. Initially, this was taken up as a pilot project, uh, but uh, then uh, this was expanded throughout uh, all the endemic areas. And then uh, this has been uh, continued for four years or more to the population, excluding children below two years. So uh, this five years has been completed and then uh, government is, uh, 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 okay. So this is transmission uh, assessment survey. As I said that uh, um, all the districts were su supposed to be given five rounds of MDA and this was completed by end of 2014 and required uh, this was supposed to be re-evaluated um, no, uh, to decide whether to stop MDA or whether to give MDA. So I am not aware whether uh, this has been, uh, this uh, survey has been, uh, this survey has been done but post survey I am yet to get any finding and uh, mm -hmm. I can see they are still giving MDA. So that is still being continued. So uh, under this uh, filaria program, you will see uh, now uh, more of a uh, problem with the lower limb, which is uh, people do call as elephant TSAs or no. So there you will see you know, more of a uh, limited uh, mobility of the patients and uh, so uh, this 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 is uh, no not only uh, lower limb certain at times uh, hydrocele is also being involved in it so uh, morbidity management is a very uh, uh, integral to filaria control program and uh, the states are being advised on upscaling home-based morbidity management of lymphedema cases and hydrocele operations to be done. The process involved updating the line listing of uh, such lymphedema and hydrocele cases district-wise, demonstration and training of on how they can uh, ensure the hygiene of the fit. So there is a kit, basically some of the states you will see a kit which is being given a soap, a soft towel and then cream which is to be applied after washing those uh, lower, uh, lower limbs. So and then uh, try to motivate those clients for do undergoing uh, surgical interventions especially for hydrocele operations. So the updated report from lymphatic filariasis endemic states indicated that there are 8.27 lakhs cases of lymphedema and 3.76 case, uh, lakhs cases of hydrocele cases are over there. So next case is dengue. So this is also uh, one of the cases which is initially started in 1990s in Delhi and then slowly, steadily, uh, rampantly it has spread throughout other states also. So no, this uh, this was included in NBTCP by 2003-2004. Uh, 
and this is caused by uh, type 2 flavi virus uh, again don't go into this zero type 1 2 3 basically you should be aware that this uh, is being spread through uh, aedes mosquito and in particular aedes aegypti and the reservoir of this uh, case uh, dengue uh, flavi virus is a uh, insect insect and man So, uh, infection can be asymptomatic and then uh, th uh, there are three types of cases you will see classical dengue uh, fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever without shock and then hemorrhagic fever with shock. So, the third one hemorrhagic fever with shock is very fatal and this has to be you know uh, uh, treated uh, promptly and then under this thing, uh, the the patient should uh, look for you know if they are having any rashes on their body, they should immediately go and consult their doctor. So again, the control strategy what has been talked under those broad three strategies. So uh, prompt uh, early identification and then complete treatment, then controlling the disease through you know, uh, insecticide treated bed nets, larva or indoor residual spray, outdoor, outdoor fogging, those things remain same, uh, applicable for here also. The fourth one is Japanese encephalitis, it is a viral disease and this is uh, transmitted by infective bites of um, female mosquito, mainly belonging to Culex family. And it is primarily a zoonotic disease and its uh, main is one of the host of this disease. So I will not go into uh, the details of these diseases. Uh, you, you, can, you can have a look. As I said uh, initially only, uh, the most focused this disease which is being, uh, which is being supposed to be covered by your slavers is uh, dengue but filaria is also important so you can always have a look on that also if you want to refer there are cases Japanese encephalitis has been has been covered in this in detail and then Kalajar. Kalajar uh, is not very much relevant for you guys but if you want to have a you know, better understanding and go through that you can go through that. Mm. If you are having any questions what we have discussed uh, till now, I am uh, open for that and we will discuss that. No questions? Okay, then I assume that there, there, there are no questions. I will do one thing. Uh, I will share that uh, malaria document, what I said uh, with you guys, or should I share it over here? Please share it over here, sir. Yeah, so I the framework I will be sharing over here. Okay. okay. PPT, I can see some typo errors. I will clear that and will be sharing with Seema. Uh, and she will share with you guys. Bro. Okay, so you guys can see the document. I think this is still upload.
got it Harris, can you see the document over here? Okay, fine. So if you guys are having no questions, thank you. I will be sharing the slides with Seema and hopefully she will be sharing.